So first, let's talk about habits. This is a change in the utility function that helps us to understand the link between asset prices and macroeconomic fluctuations. This is the paper that I wrote with John Campbell, and we'll go through that here. Uh, the objective here is to match things like the dividend yield regressions, they forecast excess returns, uh, the volatility and the correlation with business cycles, the fact that prices are low in recessions. So our main ingredient, uh, remember our, our hansen jagan athen or our, our, main, our main equation, the market sharp ratio equals risk aversion times uh, variance of consumption growth. We know the top varies, that's the dividend yield regressions. The volatility of returns does vary also, but not in lockstep with the top. So the market sharp ratio varies over time and is higher in recessions. On the right hand side, the conditional variance of consumption growth doesn't vary a whole lot. So we need a mechanism to make risk aversion higher in recessions. And that's what this model does. In bad times, people get more scared. Why? Uh, the central idea is to add a habit in the utility function. Fortunately, you've already worked this out in a problem set. If we center the utility function at x, the level of habit, and there's utility, then as consumption declines towards the habit, people get more and more scared uh, of, of going below the habit. They act in a, a more scared way. They drive down stock prices. So we will see, in bad times, stock prices falling, expected returns rising, risk aversion rising. That's just what we need. Now the equations. The utility function is just as before, except instead of c to the 1 minus gamma, we have c minus x to the 1 minus gamma. So uh, we've added the habit in there. That's the reference level for a utility function. Your job, take marginal utility. So what is the, uh, the shadow value, marginal utility of consumption? Uh, that was, that's just c minus x to the minus gamma. It's convenient to multiply and divide by the consumption. And, the, and then we define this c minus x over c. That's the surplus consumption ratio, how far consumption is uh, over its habit in relative terms. So our marginal utility, instead of being c to the minus gamma, is just c minus gamma times s to the minus gamma, where the discount factor multiplies consumption growth and uh, this surplus consumption ratio. That gives us like a second factor. People are worried not just about consumption falling, they're worried about being in a recession. They're worried about being in one of these times when consumption is very close to habit. And most of the other utility functions will end up doing something like this. We'll keep the power utility function, but we'll multiply it by something else, and then variation in that something else generates variation in the discount factor, uh, time varying expected returns. This one you can work out quickly that as consumption falls closer to habit, at least the curvature of the utility function rises. The second derivative, here we take the first derivative, the second derivative of the utility function relative to consumption is a minus gamma c to the minus gamma minus 1. Uh, turn that into risk aversion units, and you'll see it's gamma over s. So as the surplus consumption ratio declines, as people get more scared, the effective curvature rises. The curvature is no longer just gamma. Uh, it's gamma over s. So that's the main mechanism that is going to work out here. Now, what do we do? We want to specify how habit evolves over time. And, and the crucial idea is to have a slow moving habit. Um, <clears throat> we want uh, variation over time over business cycle frequencies and risk premiums. So the habit has to move up slowly over the boom, and then, and then consumption falls relative to that slow moving habit in the recession not just a one period consumption growth. So a, a simple idea would be a linear habit accumulation. Habits a slow AR1 of lag consumption. Uh, we didn't do that. Um, it works out better to have an AR1 for the surplus consumption ratio. It, it, it applies the same thing. It's, it's nonlinear and, it, and it works out better. It keeps consumption from falling below habit. So in place of this equation, we, you have to specify how habit adapts to consumption. In place of that linear equation, we have this nonlinear equation. You can see it's, it's the form of an AR1 with a conditionally heteroscedastic uh, 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 innovation term. The uh, continuous time version of the model, which I would encourage you to use, and I think we should have used. Uh, we didn't do it for expositional reasons, but it's, it's clearer, actually, once you learn continuous time to do it in continuous time. It's just an AR1 process with a, a, a shock that, has, uh, that multiplies lambda of st, so sometimes is larger and sometimes is smaller. So we've described the utility function. 
We've described how habits adapt to past consumption. Now we've got to give you the endowment. We're going to use a very simple random walk endowment. Um, and then consumption equals the endowment. That's the model. Your job is to solve it. What we need to do is find the price consumption ratio as the discounted value of the future price consumption ratio. We do that numerically. And then once you find the price consumption ratio, returns, expected returns, and everything else follows. So we're ready to look at the pictures of how does this model actually work. Here is the price consumption ratio. Again, what does that mean? That is, what is prices as a function of today's surplus consumption ratio? Simply the discounted value of tomorrow's prices uh, discounted by our, our discount factor here, R. And what does it say? As the surplus consumption ratio declines, as we go into bad times, as we go into recessions, the price dividend ratio or price consumption ratio falls. That's exactly what we thought would happen, and that's exactly what does happen. Here's expected returns. As the surplus consumption ratio declines, as consumption falls relative to habit, expected returns rise. That's exactly what we're looking for. We're, we're seeing the risk premium rise in bad times. Prices fall, expected returns rise. You can see we're going to get the regressions to work out. The risk-free rate doesn't do anything. The model was set up to have a constant risk-free rate. So we have the risk premium rising in bad times as prices fall in bad times. Uh, here is, a, a, for example, the long horizon return regressions. We saw those dividend yield regressions. This model generates those regressions. Um, here is from the model the re regression of return on dividend yields at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 year horizon. You can see the coefficients rising with horizon, the R squared rising with horizon, as they do in the data. These are the data, these are the coefficients, and the R squareds in the data. So the synthetic data from this model uh, replicates the same regression coefficients as you saw in the real data. And you saw why. In bad times, prices go down. In bad times, expected returns go up. So those regression coefficients are going to do uh, what they do in the data. Mm -hmm.